You want to know what the newest era of paintball guns is. This right here is the Shocker era, the newest mid-range paintball gun on the market going for a thousand dollars. And today we're going to put it through three different tests all while playing it and at the end of the video give a final rating on the gun to determine if this is the newest era of paintball guns. And first we're starting with the value. The Shocker era comes in at $995 making it a hundred dollars more than its predecessor, the Shocker Amp. But what does it look like when you compare it to the rest of the paintball guns in the mid-range market? The Planet Eclipse 180R comes in at $1,095 and the Dye DSR Plus costs $999, making the Shocker Era the most affordable out of all the mid-range markers. And next, what comes with the gun? You get a Freak XL barrel with a 687 insert, a full set of hex head Allen keys, a spare parts kit, grease for lubing up the marker, and a Shocker paintball barrel cover. So what was improved to add to the value? They added texture and a new rubber to the front grip that increased the size by 30%. The new bolt has been made to handle paint better in extreme conditions, and lastly, they use a brand new air transfer system that allows for fewer leaks. So what's the total value on a scale from 1 to 10? Adding in that the marker is the cheapest on the market when it comes to the mid-range paintball guns. Also that it comes with one of the best barrels in paintball and they made the gun to handle brittle paint better. But factoring in that some of the changes are less notable and I don't find as much value in them, I am giving this a 6.8 out of 10. And with the marker out of the box, let's put it to its real test and play with it. Okay, before we move on to test number two, if at any point in this video y'all are watching this and saying, hey, I wanna pick up that paintball gun, or you see any of the gear I'm wearing and you wanna pick that up as well, you can go get it at lonewolfpaintball.com. They are a sponsor of this channel and they make these videos possible. I also have a discount code over there, so at checkout, if you put in the code GYMRAT, you can save yourself 10% on select items. I wanna give a big thank you to Lone Wolf for making these videos possible and being a part of the channel. And speaking of parts, let's get on to part number two, where we're rating the hardware and software of this new gun. First, let's start on the outside gun, the ergonomics, the actual size of the gun and how it feels in your hands. The weight of the era comes in at 711 grams and the most notable changes is the milling on the gun. They went for a more smooth milling on the body with some added slashes to the gun. The big size changes in the era are the height and the grip frame is made to be taller and the increased size in the front grip by adding the new rubber to make it more comfortable to hold. Tear up the gun, you screw in the ASA, to turn it on, you press the back button and to adjust the output pressure, you do that through the front grip. These are all exactly the same as its predecessor, the amp. And how hard is it to access the board eyes and bolt? For the eyes and the board, you'll need Allen keys, which makes it a slightly tedious effort, but for the bolt, it is a simple turn and pull. Now let's look at the core. It's the heart of the gun, and it's responsible for propelling these little gel balls out of the barrel. This new engine is made to handle all sizes of paint better in all conditions. The bolt guide changed to a cone feature which makes the paintball sit slightly forward in the chamber which helps with smaller paint. And they made the bolt longer to help with brittle paint and shoot slightly quieter. The bolt cap is the last thing that changed and they have a new place that you can put an o-ring at where you can push the back one slightly forward to increase the airflow by 80% and this allows you to play in more extreme conditions like mud and cold. The new improvements on the grip frame is that the ASA has two o-rings to reduce wear and there's a new air transfer system that allows for the regulator or body to be slightly loose and it's still not leak air. Going to the board, this is the brain of the gun. This is the same board and screen as its predecessor, the amp. The change modes, I don't... <laughs> I don't even know how. Lastly, there's a new micro switch. This clicking sounds with telling your gun that you're pulling the trigger and it's been moved down. This is because the old position of the micro switch was getting damaged when people were adjusting their triggers. The eyes, which are wired, the battery, which is a nine volt, and the air efficiency, which the gun is operating at 110 PSI, and you can get around 1900 rounds out of the gun are all the same 
as the amp. And factoring all this in, what is the final rating of the hardware and software of the Aero? The pros here are that it has better paint handling, you won't mess up the micro switch, and it has pretty good air efficiency. Cons, on the other hand, is that the screen is pretty hard to see. Changing modes can be a hassle with only one button. This is a screw style ASA, not a slaps. And I think y'all know the biggest one. It uses a nine volt battery. Adding all that up for the hardware and software, the final rating I'm gonna give it is a 6.5 out of 10. Now, let's put these improvements to the test on the field. Hey, what's the cowboy? Okay, so the last test is the real one, and it's what I think about the marker. Let's start off with what I like. The shot quality is a poppy shot. It's slightly better than the recent shockers. And the ergonomics and feel on my hands was actually pretty nice with that front grip being increased in size. It actually felt pretty good to hold. And the new deuce trigger I actually found pretty easy to pull. And the last thing is something that I have to know, but this is the cheapest new mid-range paintball gun on the market but it's only $5 less than the DSR Plus, so it's not a big pro. Now let's move on to what I did not find so favorable. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a big fan of this screen. It's really hard to see what's on the screen when you're out in daylight. And the back button is pretty flush with the surrounding areas, so sometimes I thought I was pressing the button to turn it off, and actually I wasn't doing anything at all. Also, with the Allen key required to get to the board and eyes, I found myself not trying to clean this gun as much when I was on the fly. And the last thing is I did find this marker a little hard to aim because the body is skinnier than the other markers that I had previously used. But before I give you my final rating let me show you one last match with the shocker era and it's my best one hold up wait a minute And the third test, my final opinion on the gun. After factoring in the pros and cons, I did find myself enjoying using this marker more than the previous shockers. And for that, I'm giving it a 7.4 out of 10. So when we tally up all the ratings together, the final rating that I give the shocker era is a 6.93 out of 10.